Dr. Louise Irvine, you're a GP. How do you answer that question about how we deal with and treat an ageing population? I think it's a testament to the success of not just our health service, but our society as a whole, that people are living longer and more healthily. But as people get older, they do begin to accumulate various long-term conditions. And as that happens, they, their care becomes more complex. And as people get older, the, the, the greatest use of health services is actually in the last six months of life. And as there are more people reaching um, old age, we are going to require not just more health care, but also, I think this is a very important issue, social care. And we know the social care budgets have gone, have been cut by 20 to 30 percent, and that's made a huge impact on um, care of elderly people. I think it is totally unrealistic to say that we're going to make £22 billion of efficiency savings in the next five years. Um, that is That was the basis of um, Simon Stevens, the chief, ex- chief executive of the NHS. He said that we would have to get £8 billion from government and £22 billion efficiency. None of the main parties um, has really pledged to, to even meet the £8 billion. £22 billion. today in the Financial Times, there was an article by a chief economist of the Health Foundation who said, it is totally impossible. We're already a very efficient, a very lean um, structure. We're one of the most cost-effective and efficient um, health systems in the world. We've already had £20 billion of efficiency savings, mainly based on actually keeping staff wages down and a real terms cut in pay to nurses but and other Very briefly, workers. to answer John's question though, Louise, um, how are you going to uh, treat the ageing population? We will treat them by better health care. We need to expand and we need to spend more on health care, both in the community and in social, social services, but also in hospitals and general practice. General practice is the first port of call for many elderly people. So across the board, we do need to fund health care more. Anybody who says that they can make do this with £22 billion is lying to you. They will not be able to do that. We do need to expend more on health. We can stop wasting money on the market. We can stop, we can get rid of, um, un- renegotiate the PFI deals. We can do something about tax dodging. But before all that kicks in, we're going to have to face the fact that we may have to spend a penny, an, an extra penny in the pound in tax. And okay. that is actually something that many British people are prepared to do. Dr. Irvine. I think one important um, fact that is never um, discussed in this is that migrants... EU migrants actually contribute more to public services through taxation. They're, more, they're younger, they don't use the health services as much as um, Indigenous British people do, and they contribute more through their taxes. So there's a net benefit to our public services from the presence of migrants in this country. That is a fa- economic fact. It might not be... It might not um, be convenient for people who prefer to use this scare story about immigration as a deflection and a smokescreen to take to, to divert people away from the real causes of the problems in our NHS. But we must be aware that these people are making a net contribution to our public services. Dr. Louise Irvine. Um, social care it has been cut dramatically. We need to, to increase funding to meet need. And we believe in the National Health Action Party that social care should be free, just like health care, because a lot of health care is now being labelled as social care in order to means test and charge people. And we think that is fundamentally unfair. In Manchester, what they've done is joined up the health and social care budgets. Now, the problem is that the social care budget has, it, it has been decimated. The health care budget is on its knees. Combining two leaky ships is not going to make a seaworthy vessel so it's it's back to funding um, and also about entitlement once you've got major cuts then you have pressure to actually cut the entitlement for health care and we need to make sure we always have comprehensive and universal services are guaranteed by reinstating the duty of our secretary of state for health to actually provide a comprehensive health care system which we will get if we repeal the health and social care act foundation trusts are um, thank you very much wrong, and we should get rid seconds. of them okay basically. and stavy jones of the green party what louise said okay uh peter carl for labor